What up, Naughty Steppers? It's Connor Whitmore here again with another review for you on the Naughty Step channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the new EP from Eptic, released on Never Say Die Records, Anti-Human. Michael Bella, aka Eptic, is a 25-year-old producer from Munster in Belgium. A Never Say Die mainstay, despite his young age, who achieved a beatport number 5 with his first EP on the heavyweight label, entitled Like a Boss, at the age of just 19. Since then, he has released a wealth of EPs for Never Say Die, as well as a smattering of hit singles and remixes for the likes of Schism, Excision, Dylan Francis and Barely Alive. Not forgetting his collaborations with other Never Say Die legends, Zomboy, must Die and Abstract, as well as others such as Jaws and Funkcase. This really exuberant, bubbly, cartoonish style of dubstep, uh, incorporating a lot of Rusko-esque wubs into more modern, higher tempo forms of dubstep production. Very clean and accurate and polished, he has talked previously about how it usually takes him around a month to finish a tune. Listening to a track again and again to see what direction to take it in next, the ridiculous amount of detail in his music has been clear from the very off. Creator of iconic tracks such as What Have You Done, Trouble, Gunfinger, Mastermind, Spellbound, Level Midnight, Like A Boss, an absolute cornucopia of statement-making songs. Someone who has produced some of my favourite dubstep EPs of all time, and with undoubtedly one of the most distinctive styles in the genre, remarkable considering how old he was when he was making these projects. I mean, he graduated from art college in 2015, can we just take a moment to think about how on earth he produced all this music while still being in education? Genuinely baffling. Also pretty sure he's done all of his own artworks too, not surprising considering he studied illustration, but still, mad skills. In saying this however, I must say that I've found myself a little bit underwhelmed by his output since the glory days of the early to mid 10s. His forays into the spinning records label weren't something that I expected at all to be honest, and I wasn't too surprised that these tracks weren't quite for me. But even his most recent singles such as Bloodlust and his collaborations with Zomboy and Abstract, I feel didn't quite hit the mark. Decent ideas not quite executed in that bright, quirky, adventurous way. Almost as if he matured really quickly to the extent that his music became less playful and experimental, settling for more standard structures and sonic setups. Leaving me wondering as to what sort of eptic we were going to get going into this new EP. And for me personally, I feel like this thing in its entirety is a bit of a mixed bag. It has its standout vintage eptic moments, but also others where it's not as animated and definitely an extension of the kind of roots that he's been going down over the last couple of years. Seemingly prizing the sound over the idea, keeping the focus on one particular sound for substantial parts of Anti-Human as a collection of tracks. But this understanding that there are both really good bits and not so good bits is prevalent in all three of Eptic's tracks here. At the same time quite different alongside each other too, so I think it's worth discussing them individually within this good and less good idea before getting into Tramper's remix following that. In the opening track, Hold Me Back, whilst I like the triumphant and regal appeal to the high-pitched horn sounds in the introduction, I feel like they're overdone slightly. Becoming quite incessant and a little too glaring over time, I did, however, enjoy the first Hold Me Back vocal sample, robotic sounding and perfect in its note progression, very introductory. I do like how the track becomes demented in the build, uh, the vocal being twisted and delivered again through this robotic filter, the chopping up of which is classic Eptic. Something which extends into the main drops, uh, bringing together this video game screechiness with yoi sounds that again are brilliant in sound and note direction. <laughs> But the screechiness, laid over a pretty slow paced percussive backdrop, just drags a little. Uh, the sounds are nice but it's plodding nature stops me from being really wowed here. However, the progression, with those cascading fuzzy synths in amongst the grungier notes, poses a really sweet dynamic, 
and more active way for the drop to develop. Following the regal and triumphant feel being brought back in a squeal-driven interlude, we have a midsection of chirpy animal sounds and more video game fuzziness, the melody of which has some direction but isn't that genuine in telling a story at this point in the track, although I do love the increased prominence of those ricocheting vocal sounds. Oh. See, in the song itself, it goes oh, 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 like that, and it's really cool, but unfortunately, I'm only playing the music through one speaker, so uh, yeah, that's all you're getting, I'm afraid. But you get my drift. The second drop picks up where the first left off, with a couple of small touches elevating it as a notable evolution from the first. The isolation of the screechy sounds in that release, full of that eptic shine, and also the consistency from drop to drop, I think I appreciate that about this opener. It's a long track, he wanted it to leave a mark on the listener whilst also showing how effective he felt the original drop was, so why not just repeat it? Although it is very similar, I think it's quite clever myself. As the song draws to a close, the reintroduction of the Your Here vocal sample is a nice reference point for the beginning of the track, uh, closing in that gloomy, unnerving way fitting for the picture that Eptic wants to paint. But this is kind of thrown out the window with the final isolation of the Hold Me Back vocal sample, delivered in this gravelly, jarring way, an unpleasant listen, and I kind of wish that he'd left with the You're Here one. So as you can see, the first track is very much a balancing act, and the following two tunes carry on in that vein in my opinion. The second track, Watch Out, invites us in with an outer-worldly, shimmering opening few seconds, before a lively, delicate pinprick introduction full of glowing pointed notes and intricate percussion. It's here that I feel we get the first true glimmer of the Eptic of old, very sprightly and primal, with those shouts and yeahs in the background too. I also really enjoy the length of this intro and build. It could have been cut short on multiple occasions, but Eptic just keeps building on it through percussion and an array of skittish sounds blooming into existence. Meaning that when it breaks down two thirds of the way in, I was slightly let down for enjoying the momentum of it, uh, hoping that it would extend to just before the drop to really hone in on that marauding feel. But it picks up again in fairness, re-engaging the punchiness of the percussion as the vocal and more squealing sounds emerge from below, uh, an inkling as to what we're gonna get in the first drop. The latter of which blasts to the front of the track in a drop that has a very Jungle Terror, Valentino Khan feel to it. The wildness is infectious. It makes me want to do this. Also love how these particular squeals get taken down an octave to become more menacing and cutting. Could be a little more added in sound wise, but it's refreshingly forceful in comparison to the first track. We move on towards a quick build and double drop, where the squeals interject at different octaves amidst these gritty stabbing sounds that lay above everything else, which have a solid kick to them. The sub underneath props them up very well but I'm not sure I find them riveting in and of themselves. The midsection here maintains the alertness of the introduction, but is another example of Eptic making slight changes to spice things up a bit, keeping you aware of the directions it's going off in. The vocal being more jittery, the drums initially being more staggered to gear us up for the second drop, and that brief moment of isolation at 2 minutes 38. <laughs> Things that cannot be ignored as Eptic reverts to his past self with this really fine-tuned section before the second drop comes in, probably my favourite on the EP. A thrilling switch-up which is a fantastic interaction between zaps and lasers, skittish staff rubbery twangs, also well cut and assembled, firing off in all directions in this explosive chemical reaction of a drop. My only gripe here being that I feel even more could have been put in, little pockets of space where the extra sound or two could have taken it that bit further. 
but overall the distribution of everything is really well done, emphatic in its brevity too, just has you moving. Albeit not preparing us for those crawling sounds and vocal at the end, a spooky, enchanting juxtaposition from what precedes it, simultaneously unsettling and alluring, a fitting way to end such a diverse track though. Moving on to the third track, No Mercy, I enjoy the serious vibe to this introduction, more squealing sounds finding their way to the front, following a hazy, stormy opening few seconds. Arguably the most blinding squeals of Eptic's three tracks, but they have a journey to them, another point in the EP that sounds very distinctively like him, this is properly evil Eptic vibes. The build begins with these grating growls, ravenous and predatory in their design, and perfect in isolation. <laughs> With lasers and strings growing into the build as it progresses, I love the tension as everything increases, could have been weightier but it sets us up for the drop in that devilish eptic manner. The grating, ravenous sounds extending into the drop atop some heavy percussion, uh, repeated twice more when I think once would have been more appropriate. The impact of that sound has already been felt by that point, having three of them before the glitchy moment means that Again, it drags for not throwing the bits of contrast at you sooner. The progression to this drop, more staggered and blurted out, is a decent variation with more sound experimentation, but I wouldn't say it takes the track to a new level in any way. However, from here the track goes through a significantly upward curve, starting with a midsection that makes us feel as if we're landing on another planet, setting a scene for regathering. <laughs> Strengthening as more things come into the picture, not sure that everything coheres in an effortless way, but it sure is cinematic as we gear towards the second drop. Another howitzer of a switch up as Eptic translates the essence of the first drop into a rhythm structure. Great bounce to this one, easy to bop along to even in its development, just the awareness not only to change the structure within this song, but also of the trends current to dubstep today, astutely done. And it's as the outro fades away, complete with a robotic demonic laugh, that we know Eptic's work here is done. What I've done here, going through each track step by step, is something I feel you have to do in making clear that split between good and not quite as good, because it's evident in nearly every section on this EP. A positive that Anti-Human possesses as a whole, however, is its length. Three tracks here with a fair amount to say and offer, all in completely different ways as well. The first is more pensive and focused on particular sounds, the second hones in on the relationship between all of the sounds and more, the third sets more of a scene, so there's variety enough in that respect. All of which comes before Tramper puts his stamp on the EP with its closing track, his remix of the opener, Hold Me Back. An interesting, minimalistic take on his usually drawn out style, with brief bursts of sound forcing their way into the track like a raging animal trying to desperately get out of its cage. Impressing itself in this very stop-start way, I'm finding it quite difficult to get into and move along with it because of that, especially with some of the sounds being a bit muddied, but I think that's their purpose. Tramper is renowned for these enduring noises that are arguably there more to be appreciated than danced to, that's their appeal. There's variety to his dubstep as well, some classically drawn out sounds of his, and other sections where more is added in, particularly in the progression to the first drop and the second main drop, a more voracious mutation of the first. Also winding these moments down really well, the transitions within drops between the stuff where more is happening and others where less is happening are seamless. Aside from the heavy stuff, I also really enjoy his take on the opening regal notes from the original, delivered in that lower octave to make them a little easier on the ear. And the interjecting vocal samples to his drops are so good, real bravado to them and very fitting for Tramper's style. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh yeah, those bits are mighty juicy. It's not a remix that I'm loving on the surface yet in terms of ideas, but it's incredibly aware structurally and stands as a clear variation of his usual style. Sometimes you have to dig deep with a piece of music and realise other ways of enjoying it beyond your instinctive reaction, and that's the case with this track, a potential remix of the year favourite for me. But overall, Anti-Human is in many ways a reminder of why we love Eptic as a producer, but also of some of the less fruitful directions he has taken over the last couple of years. The high definition aspect of Eptic's sound is still there, you can tell it's his through the gleam of a lot of his sounds and effects, moments where he goes the extra mile to fit loads in, but there are also moments where I just feel like there isn't a lot going on, losing the animation and pizzazz that we have come to know him for. As I alluded to earlier, it's as if in these moments he is keen for his style to seem more mature, championing individual sounds and their longevity over the general ideas per se. There's always something withdrawn to offset the more vibrant stuff, uh, resulting in moments that just don't take me away like his old stuff used to and still does to this day. An important point to make, however, is that Eptic's good is much better than his less good is not good. By this, I mean the good is more apparent than the not so good. The less impactful stuff is weak for him, but not objectively bad, and it's also a sign of how high a standard he has set over the years. And we should grow accustomed to appreciating his sound in different ways because every artist should feel like they can do whatever they want with their sound. Moreover, who knows, this EP could be a real slow burner for me and I could end up enjoying it much more as I listen to it again and again. Now, in terms of a favourite from Anti-Human, then I think I'm going to have to go with the one I talked most effusively about in this review, and that's Watch Out. For me, the most complete track of Eptix 3, the most going for it, it has the most supporting sounds pushing it forward to new heights, taking your attention in many directions, which we have come to know and love Eptic for. And in terms of recommendations, if you enjoyed this EP, of course, Eptic sound is very individual and unique, but if you enjoy the alien aesthetic of dubstep, expressed through a more spacey medium, then I think you wouldn't do too bad to look at someone like Krimmer, especially with the vocal sample usage he has to his name as well. And so that is that for another review on the Naughty Step channel, this time of the new Eptic EP, released on Never Say Die, entitled Anti-Human. Thank you very much, and as always, for tuning in. Be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts on Anti-Human. What did you guys make of it? Do you have a favourite track of the four? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, then be sure to give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hitting that notification bell along the way so you can be notified whenever I upload to the Naughty Step channel. Next to my head, there should be some other Never Say Die reviews from the channel, so if you enjoyed this one, then be sure to check those out too. And don't forget to like and follow Naughty Step across all social media if you haven't already. With everything linked, including that sole recommendation, in the description box down below. And lastly, if it's naughty, then you know guys, so be sure as always to keep it naughty and stay safe. And I shall see all of you folks in the next one. Peace out.